I am so glad that people like Alex are out there to encourage us and give us great tips on starting an exercise program. I don't know about you guys, but I have lots of, I call them hills and valleys. You know, the valleys are more of the down. I just don't feel like getting outside and doing stuff. And, and uh, I feel crappy when I do that. And I know that if I take in a big valley and I take time off, it's sometimes hard to get out of my valley. But I know because I've had lots of hills and valleys that uh, I have to make a plan. And so I'll metaphorically, because I actually don't write it in my calendar, but when I need to get out, I will watch motivational videos and I'll just say Tuesday's the day that I'm starting. And always, always I feel better after starting it, even though I didn't want to get out the door. And how do you guys manage those hills and valleys or whatever you want to call them to maintain your fitness? Uh, Dave, let's start with you. Yeah, so um, I wasn't there for the recording, uh, but I, I listened um, shortly after, and I was just amazed uh, by the amount of knowledge uh, that comes out with Alex there. So um, one thing that I am uh, I try and do is I, I post a lot on my social media, um, and it sounds bad, I don't know, maybe, but people are like, wow, you go walking a lot, go, I'm like, yeah, like I, I do. And then I was like, I still, I, I still need to. And it's kind of like, and I tell people about it because I feel like if I tell people about it and people ask me about it, then that encourages me to keep going. And that's what I like to do. And like we set our, set our goal this year. So I like to achieve things and I hate falling short. So I want to be that person that sets the goal, accomplishes the goal, or if I tell someone I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So I try not to use excuses. If I do use an excuse, it's usually medically based. So um, I'll be like, hey, listen, I can't go you know, right now. My blood sugar is low. Give me 20 minutes and then we can you know, go for a walk or whatever. And then that may consequentially shorten the walk. But at the same time, I'm going to get something done. Rather, if it's not the whole thing, then something uh, and usually for a valid reason. So I usually like to, to post about it, tell people about it. And that kind of keeps me accountable without them knowing. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question because the hardest part of physical activity is actually putting your shoes on and getting out the door. And sometimes it's really hard to get your shoes on because you just don't want to get out the door. How do you do it in the spur of the moment? So, you know, how do you do it when you don't have, you know, someone commenting on social media or calling you up or something? Same way I put my pants on one foot at a time. So it's literally, you just, you just got to do it. Um, and it's, you know, sometimes I'll pout and I'll whine and she'll like, let's go. And she'll be standing at the bottom of the stairs. I'm like, I don't want to. She's like, let's go. And I was like, okay, fine. And then we go. And um, I think a lot of people um, can attest to this. Doesn't matter what kind of mood you're in. You can be in the lowest uh, moods. You can be so out of it. But once you take like that first couple of steps, it, it totally feels different. And, you know, you may not want to do a 10 K, but you're like, okay, I'll do, I'll do five. And next thing you know, you're doing seven. You're like, how did this happen? You know, it just, yeah. One foot at a time, one step at a time. That's pretty much set a small goal and work through it. Yeah. I think that's really important because oftentimes I'll forgive myself even before I start it. I'll just say, you know what? It's okay. If you walk, um, it's okay. Like it's not that big of a deal. The fact is that you're right. And you're right. You always end up doing more than, than you do. But I, I take heart in knowing, although Alex is a super athlete and I've met a lot of athletes, every athlete has those days where they just don't want to go out and train and they don't have anything special about them. They just, like you said, they just do it. Jess, how about you when you're in the valley of, I don't want to go outside and I don't want to do exercise. How do you get over that? Or how do you conquer that feeling? I think it's, it's hard because everyone is, is human. And I definitely live a more sedentary life than, you know, an, an athlete. So for me, a lot of my, my, the fitness type of fitness that I'm doing is, kind of less energy, but I still see the value in doing something do, like moving a little bit. Um, so for me, like, I've, I think I've talked a little bit about this before. I, I'm a planner. I have to have it in my calendar and I kind of schedule my weeks out a week in advance. 
So I'll know, okay, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday morning, I am doing a class. And then the other weeks, once I get my little guy from school, we are going to go for a bike ride. We are going to go for a hike. Uh, we're going to do something that's not, you know, as like, I'm not going to feel as, um, kind of high energy or exert myself too much. It's going to be a little bit low, lower key exercise because I will be doing it with my son. Um, but that's just an, a way that I can kind of guarantee that I'm going to have some kind of activity and, and get outside a little bit. Um, but I do schedule it in my calendar. I have my Google calendar and it will say, go for a walk after dinner, just get outside. Um, and I really have to stick to it. And I think for me, um, I hold myself accountable for those days of the week. Um, but I do have a gym buddy who I really try to get to go to the gym with me. Um, but life is busy and sometimes our schedules don't line up, but if I know that it's in my calendar, I'm going to go. Um, and I've already, I think that the one thing that's been great for me through the pandemic is now gyms require you to book that time slot in advance. So Sunday I'll book down or book out what classes I'm going to, and I don't cancel them unless, you know, I haven't really like it's, it's been, it's been pretty, pretty good. I, I love it that both of you guys have plans. You have uh, Dave, you have Joe and um, just, you have your calendar, you know, you both have things that you're accountable to um, so that if I don't go, you know, like Dave's kind of like you said, whining, Joe is kind of kicking you in the butt a little bit. And Jess, you're oh, dragging me down the stairs. She's not behind me. She's pulling me down the stairs. <laughs> I love it. Exercise is hard and commitment to an exercise routine is, is not hard. Uh, it's not easy. I mean, wow. I can't believe I just said that it's not easy, but I love the fact that it becomes a habit after a while. Um, have you guys, uh, made this a habit, Dave, is this now a habit for you? Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely habits. It's, it's actually part of my life now. So it's part of who I am. So hiking people are like, Oh, you're the hiker guy. I used to be the food guy. And now I'm kind of both, which I'm, I think I'm totally fine with. Um, and I integrate both uh, into that. So, you know, we were just on a trip and we would plan food or beverages um, in around kind of the place that we go hiking. And that's just what it becomes. And now that's who we are. I, lo I love it. Jess, how about you? Yeah. yeah, I'm the same. And I think, you know, I am only human and humans tend to fall off the bandwagon every now and then. So it's usually like if I get sick or if there's a holiday and it throws my routine off, it takes a little bit adjusting to get back into that habit. But once I'm in the habit, I'm usually good. Um, so like this week, um, you know, we had the Thanksgiving Monday. So there was one Monday that the gyms were, were closed. Monday's usually my gym day but I was camping and we went for a walk. So it wasn't an in class, but I was still outside. I still did exercise. And I think as long as you, you, you have to guarantee those days where you're going to stay active, um, that helps me. I, love it. I think Thanks one so of the most guys. important, I think one of the most important things to say is um, if you're starting out and you're fresh, do not expect to um, get this habit started within, you know, the first uh, day or two. It's not something that's going to be easy. You got to work to it. So um, if you're looking for encouragement, you can always uh, message us. You can, um, you know, we'll, we'll get you going. So uh, please don't, uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with us and we can help you uh, on your plan. I, I can't agree more because there's nothing better than having a cheering section cheering you on. Um, and we will all cheer you on. That's, that's for sure. Cause we're all excited that you're taking this step. So until next time, we'll talk food. We'll talk fitness. And we'll do it together. Thank you for watching and listening to this week's episode of the Food and Fitness Podcast. Join us next week when we sit down and talk to Brent Diaz about his career in social work, long distance running, family, and mental health.